Manscaped, folks. Manscaped is the real deal. You cannot go wrong. Their new performance package 5.0 Ultra features the Lawnmower 5.0. We are talking about a next generation trimmer with interchangeable blade heads for whatever shave your mind can imagine. Manscaped has got you covered. AI is cool, but I think this might be the biggest technological advancement the world has seen in the past decade. Get 20% off plus free shipping with promo code DUMB. That's going to be promo code DUMB at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code DUMB at manscaped.com. I can promise you've never seen a ball trimmer look like a spaceship. Get yours today from our folks at Manscaped. We'll see you over there. Here we are, Michael. Me and you again, pal. Me and you. You know what? There's no way that his excuse could be nearly as good as the excuses I could give today. There's just, there's just no way. There's no how, way. How many times can we do? How many times can we do this? It's the life that we live, and I've just accepted it at this point. I've just accepted it. So, and I, you know what? I'm not even going to give him any shit because there's no point. There's Where, no. Where's point. it going to go? Where's it's gonna it going to go? Thing. It's going to go nowhere. It's going to go nowhere. So. Well, That's I do funny. still think you should give him some shit. But... Of course you do, because then he's going to come back at me. It's going to get me riled yeah. up. You're going to just sit there. I'll and join you're... in. No, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll join in. I mean, it's ridiculous. I think enough is enough. It's just, it's every week with this guy now. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, pal. How was your yep. Christmas? Did you have a good Christmas? It's really nice. Kids had such a great time. They, uh, they got so much shit. Um, the food was great. Everything was great. Very, very, kids are very lucky. Very Don't lucky. show him Bob does sports, by the way, because Joe was in the cart with me and pretty much told the world that in his eyes, Santa isn't real. Yeah, no, no, no. Can't Did you know that. that happened in a Bob does sports episode and Jet kept it in? I was shocked. Well, I guess they're thinking that the demographic, age demographic, shouldn't be too uh, affected by such a uh, heinous accusation. But ne needless uh, to say, it shouldn't be an accusation that's thrown out there lightly. It's not appropriate. I know. And to, to be honest with you, partially, Yaman's very good about, you know, cancel control, making sure that we don't get canceled. <laughs> I was shocked that he didn't take that out. Well, you know, maybe he didn't want he didn't want to muzzle Joe, you know. Now, Joe's going on two minutes late. We'll see how much longer late he, he's going to be. But this is this is the this is the life we we live now. So um, how about you? How was yours? Was everything good? Christmas. You know, yeah. I, I ate a lot. I, I'll tell you this. I, I really do think that I think the biggest down day of the year might be today, the, the day after Christmas. Like, are you a little bit do you have a little bit of those post Christmas blues? Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it the blues. I mean, I, it's actually, I gotta be honest when you, when you have kids, I think parents would agree with me. Like there's a big wave of relief that comes after the Christmas day because there's so much going into getting everything ready for the kids. And there's just so much going on. And especially if you're a parent with kids who hosts a major holiday, we don't, we don't host Christmas Eve or Christmas day. Now we do a lot. I do a ton for Christmas Eve to yeah. get that ready, but we don't actually host it at our house, but for parents that are hosting Christmas day and they have kids and they're having 20 people over 25 people over. I, I think the next day is kind of like that wave of relief where you just can kind of sit back and you'd be like, Oh my God, it's over. Thank God. I could actually relax a little bit. So for me, like at this point, it's like, it's like, you know, it was here. It was great. It goes too fast. That definitely, it goes too fast. Like I think about as a kid, doesn't it feel like when you were a kid, you know, you're counting down the days and it seemed like it took so long to get there once you hit this December. Now it's kind of like it just gets here and it's gone. I agree. It's I, I agree. Plus two, you know, for me and you definitely got it, it just sucks that Christmas isn't about me anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's an acceptance that I, you know what, though, Bob, I really that don't bother me anymore, though. It, I, doesn't, I, it bothers me. I'd like Christmas to still be about me. But when you have kids one day, you're going to it's you're going to just be like, this is this is so much funnier to watch the kids just to watch how they just react to everything. Like it's <laughs> like they just got like, you know. Wow. I hope that was a new Christmas present. And that's the reason he's wearing it. Boys. Joseph. <laughs> how are we doing this morning? Yeah, Joseph. Michael, the quality over there is not not ideal. Over there. <laughs> oh, my God. It's really just. 
<laughs> this guy. Joe, uh, uh, Joe, let me ask you a question. How could you have the balls to say something like that when you're not only five minutes late to the podcast? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What no. five minutes late? We were supposed to do 1220. Whoa, 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 whoa. We agreed on 1220. That was the final agreement. Bob can co-sign that. It's and, changed like four times. It's hard to keep track of what's going and, on. And I'm sorry, my, my I don't have an ideal studio setting. I'm recording from my in-laws basement, okay? And I'm, I'm leaving my family for an hour to do this, okay? Just because th I, this means a lot. This means everything. The pot is everything. And I think we could all agree. In fact, we should get t-shirts. The pot is everything. Pot is everything. Um, but you know what? I'm here. I'm sorry I can't give you the best studio quality. I just, I just hold you to such a high standard, typically speaking, that it's just shocking when you know it's it's not up to the level that I'm used to from you, Bear Down. That's I'm not I'm not taking a shot here. No. If anything, I'm I'm giving you credence to the fact that or credit to the fact that that you normally are a step above. Well, I mean, normally under normal circumstances, I'd be in the cave in the in the lab set up real normal, but I'm not there. I'm I'm not home. I'm 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 away because of All Christmas. Right. Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas guys. Merry Grab it up for Christmas. Christmas. Grab it up for Christmas. You got a couple okay. things on the on the horizon today. Uh, you know, Christmas. And Joe, I said earlier, I think this is one of the more depressing days of the year. You have this long build up to Christmas. And uh, you know, we had a few football games. It's, it's a little depressing now. Um, and then most importantly, Dorothy DeMar's birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Dorothy D. He's having a nice little birthday. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a it's a big day. It's a big day. Not depressing Not depressing on my end. My mom's birthday is, uh, should be a cherished holiday. My mom is a saint. The fact that she's had to put up with me as long as she has and hasn't lost her mind is, uh, quite frankly, a testament in and of itself yeah. Yeah, I agree um, with that. to the person that she is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's depressing because it's still technically the holidays. Most people have time off, Bob. Um, and, and, you know, it's like, especially when you're, you know, the kids are, have new toys to keep them company and, you know, so like, there's a lot of things that I think that uh, you could take solace in of today. Um, I, 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 plus, by the way, I will say this. I think the most underrated leftovers of the year are Christmas leftovers. You, you give me stuffing mashed potatoes and you make turkey sandwiches or I mean, soup with turkey i mean it's thanksgiving leftovers though you're naming the thanksgiving leftovers yeah, it's the same what? thing i'm not all in on thanksgiving man i, no, I, I, I know you're i know you're not but in terms of leftovers i would say the leftover looks on christmas is pretty much similar to thanksgiving stuffing mashed potatoes turkey i mean yeah cranberry. well i'm saying it's, it's okay i forgot the thanksgiving and christmas i would say but it's a great day for 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 leftovers it's, it's you know what it's almost you know what it's almost time for joe what chinese buffet oh when does that happen new year's day every new year's day new, yeah that's just wow. day. for the football games too oh it just so happens that the <laughs> sure. i mean it's really gonna be that's really, that's really anyway, gonna be I, my cousin invited me to the rose bowl i had i said oh. i said no too quick I, it, it was such a hard no it was you're so anti sporting events, Bob. It's got you know, and the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is like the most I don't want to say the pageantry, but the pageantry of the Rose Bowl is like that's the one bowl game left that has so much history behind it, Bob. The Rose Bowl, par the parade of roses is like a huge deal. <laughs> It's going to be a great game, too, Bob. Bob Michigan, Bob Alabama. Does, Bob does not give a fuck about any of that. I have no he desire. He just I, doesn't. I, I, I have no desire. I first off, they there it's it's a party of twelve going and a lot of family, but they're sticking me. The seat that I would have to have would be with somebody that I don't know. That, oh well, that that, that I'll give no, you that. I could do without that. Me and Joey D have a big New Year's Eve, and we're going to be wildly hungover. I'd rather just sit home, order a bagel. What are you doing for, what are you doing for Eve? We're doing dinner, and then I I um. I ran into this old chef that used to work at the Four Seasons, and right. uh, he, he's got a place that he's having us over after dinner. So it's going to be a whole. It's going to be a whole big thing. The dinner is going to be nice too. We got a private room in this nice Italian it's restaurant. Nice. Yeah, it's no. going to be special. That room is undefeated, Joseph. Yeah, and and you know what? We're going out. We're going out soon, dude. I I, I got to start packing stuff. I go home tomorrow, and I got to start packing. So this is like the last hurrah for us in California. Now, and does then your mom, then we're Florida does your mom guys. get cheated out of her birthday a little bit today, Joe? Or do you guys make a nice big deal out of it? No, this? we'll we'll do a nice steak dinner tonight for oh, her. Oh, good. good. Um, we'll all go out as a family, have dinner, um, and then she'll she'll do her things during the day. Now, in 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 Canada, the twenty sixth is like the Black Friday of Canada. It's called Boxing Day. Boxing day. 
Yep. So, so all, you know how Black Friday is all the sales. So everybody today is at the mall. Everybody goes shopping. Everybody takes their Christmas money and they go and buy all the sales that are, that are available to them. So yeah, in the past, my mom has gotten a little bit shafted because people are out, you know, we'd be out shopping or getting stuff or, you know, getting stuff for ourselves, you know, the hedonists that we are for Christmas. And my mom would be stuck at home. Like, you know, so yeah, a little bit, I, you know, I think if you get, you know, I, I did a couple cameos for people who were born on Christmas or the day after or before you get shafted so badly because so many people will be like, this is your birthday and Christmas gift. Right. That's bullshit. You should yeah, be yeah. able to have a birthday gift yeah. and a Christmas gift. And and the people who have to suffer for that, I, 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 I really I feel for you so much because that's not right. And it doesn't happen any other time of the year. It's just if you're so unfortunate that you're born either the day or two that leads within Christmas that people will just kind of group that bullshit, you know, gifting together. And, and those people, man, they, they deserve to be recognized. That ain't right. I had a guy that birthday was on New Year's Eve. I think that might be one of the tougher birthdays. <laughs> well, no, everybody's down to party, Bob. Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe, but that that is so not about you. You know, yeah. that night has nothing kind of like it. it's kind of like now how they how the Super Bowl got bumped up one week and now it lands on my birthday week every weekend now the Super Bowl Sunday. Like last <laughs> year was literally on the day of my birthday, the 12th. Well, like, maybe no one year you'll get a birthday wish and the Bears will be in it. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Folks, we interrupt the Brilliant Dumb show to let you know that the Brilliant Dumb show is brought to you by the fine folks over at AG1. I started taking AG1 for about a year and a half now. If you're a long-time listener, you know I'm a big AG1 guy. Gut health, my overall immune system, and just to add that extra spark of energy into my day-to-day, which everybody needs that day-to-day energy. I recommend AG1 to all my family and friends because it really does put me in the right mindset, and I know I'm taking the best, finest ingredients, something that I could replace my multivitamin with, came from ag1 just one scoop does it all for you you can't go wrong ag1 is the supplement i trust to provide the support my body needs daily and that's why they've been a partner for so long if you want to take ownership of your health it starts with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d3 k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase go to drinkag1.com slash dumb that's drinkag1.com slash dumb check it out they've looked better they no, they've looked better of late bothered me the jets like last weekend was such a perfect game for the jets to lose draft picks wise i think they played amazing five or six yeah and of course they they can't even lose right and now the greasy hall man yeah, I mean, it's just it's just brutal, man. It's absolutely brutal. <laughs> you know what's what's crazy to me, Joseph, is what? why does like you talked about the the leftovers from yesterday? Yeah, Christmas has got to pick a lane with food wise. Christmas just piggybacks off of what Thanksgiving does. I never understood how does Christmas not have its own thing? Well, the Italian community we we celebrate Christmas like I. Michael, I don't know what you do, but we always do homemade ravioli. Starts off. That sounds awesome. So, so the, so, so all the girls, all the ladies, they got, they got uh, a week ago, they went and they just made pounds of ravioli. So then when the Christmas meal starts, it's, we do pre-dinner, like torpedo shrimp, charcuterie boards, cocktail shrimp, um, you know, like all sorts of stuff. And then the dinner starts with in a Canada, bowl of ravioli. In Canada is a cocktail shrimp. Yeah. I was wondering what the deal is with that. No, I'm, I'm being, is I it called cocktail shrimp in Canada? <laughs> Shrimp cocktail, I guess you would say. Oh no, no, um, no, no! Don't change it on my account. I want to know what. No, it's- I, I just messed. I messed up. I messed. Up. <laughs> All right, because I was I wondering if the, I was going to say that's fascinating. If it's called, yeah, cocktail. I caught that too. But I was going to, I was just going to let him eat. I was just going to let him ride. No, I actually screwed that up. That's on me. I'll wear that one. Sometimes but you no, but then you. Mikey, do you not start with the, like we do a big bowl of of ravioli before anything else comes that's out. Sounds great. That's um, the way to do it. Hey, so yesterday we started with uh, lasagna was the first. Yeah, lasagna is another play. It's either ravioli or lasagna. Um, yeah, but- and it, it, it kind of, it jump starts the meal. It really does. It kind of, and then, and then all the other stuff kind of comes in after, but it's, it's like scoring a, an opening drive touchdown, Bob. It really gets the. Oh, oh. Up baby doll. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dom. 
Yeah. I thought Dom wanted to talk a little Bears football for a little bit. <laughs> Let's talk a little Bears football? No? no. no. Hey, Dom. Hey, what Dom. He got, this, uh, got this digital, got it. He got this little, like, uh, child's digital camera for Christmas, and he's just going all over the house, just taking <laughs> pictures. Influencing early. In yep. Wow. Early. Pretty My soon, own. Pops will show him how to put up an Instagram post. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Mommy Dom, all right? <laughs> My favorite all-time Dom moment is when Cutsy got legitimately pissed off with Mikey for letting Mikey fall asleep. Well, right around Dom this fall asleep. Year, Dom fell asleep, and Cutsy was mad at Mikey V for letting him fall asleep. Was I wrong, though, Bob? We got killed. No, it was a Notre Dame game. We were, we were cruise control. Dom went to bed, and... And they all fell apart. Don Tom is kind of like in the a, middle in the at halftime of a Notre Dame bowl game, and that was the end of it. Yeah, but Dom has been for in many ways like an oracle when he predicts games. Like we need to start doing a Dom pick of the week. Yeah, um, I try to get it when he's ready. You know, you can't force those things. He just no. he feels it and he'll give you the pick. Mikey, did did uh did Joe tell you about my day from hell betting? Oh my god! I think let me let me say this right now. This weekend killed a lot of people, man. This weekend, myself included, like it was just what the Chiefs did and what the Eagles did. Every and, underdog came through. It's my- and th- yeah, I mean the Niners. I mean everyone and their mother was all over San Francisco. It felt like uh, it was just a bad. I think it was just a really bad weekend for everybody. It was really I, bad. I went with you and Diamonds the other day. And it got so bad. Like once I, I, my, like mathematically, if you look at the way that I bet, there's no way I can win. There's no way. It's like when I win, I put in the same bet. When I lose, I try and double the bet. Like I feel like mathematically, there's no way I could ever end up winning. I think the only worse gambler than you might be the Jets. Jets awful. And and, <laughs> and they Jets were together. Awful. They were together on Christmas or whatever day Jets was. <laughs> Jets a Jets a legitimate fucking mush, man. He <laughs> he really is. He's so bad. Um <laughs> so things started to go south. And finally, I just went haywire and I went completely rogue. Mikey, I put in a thousand dollars on every single MBA. <laughs> Wait, a thousand across the board on every game? On every game, I put in every oh, NBA. Oh my under. god! The you national basically did need a bucket. The National Basketball Association, okay, has never scored more points than they scored <laughs> that day. Never. There were points going up. Let it's like they were playing skee ball. There, <laughs> there were just points. I got absolutely fucking wrecked and you know it's bad when the cameo promo goes up even joe called me out on that that's when you know it's big bad. day cameo. <laughs> cameo promo poor was- santa claus had to be thrown into the crossfire for bob's you know a resurgence <laughs> Jeff brought his friend over to come watch the games i gave this guy nothing i i had nothing how was that guy who was it one he's of the classic, shickers? He's a classic shicker. He every <laughs> every one of the Jets friends, they all look alike. They all worship the Jet. And it's it's really bizarre, but I had nothing for him. It was it was the worst day gambling I, I've ever had. I, I shut down the account. I it just I'm oh. good. <laughs> shut the down. NBA, I mean the NBA is literally like you may as well just take a take a coin and just flip it in the air. The NBA is just so, so bad. It's so bad to bet. It's so bad. It's the worst. Well, the end, the ask, end of the game, too. He'll play the same thing. He'll tell the end you of the game, too, Mikey, you could have, like, a minus seven, and it, it could be, like, six or seven or eight. And with the free throws and everything, you oh. have no idea where it's going to go. No. No. You have it's, no it's, clue. It's, it's literally horrific. It's horrific. Yeah, I, I, you know, with the NBA, everybody wants to bet the over, so I want to be in the, you know, with the house on Love the under. Under. Did you lose under. everyone? Not everyone. I think I was one for eight. <laughs> it was awful. It, it was, and there was nothing to root for. There was nothing. Diamonds gave an over. That was his game of the year that scored seven points. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing left, man. I'm telling you. Usually I, I say it and I return. I honestly think, I, I don't know. 
I don't know if I can do it anymore. Bob's one of those guys that he needs somebody there close by his side, watching him throughout the day, monitoring him, keeping him in line, because otherwise he's known to go rogue like this, and there's just no rhyme or reason to it. Normally, I'm that guy. I, I kind of keep tabs on him to see where he is, because... <laughs> He's you're an emotional guy during the day, Bob, which is great because when things are going great, Bob wow. is as high. I mean, the vibes will never be higher. But then as soon as it takes a toll, man, I tell you, Bob is Bob will go from a hundred down to zero in a quick matter of time. You know what too that that really bothers me is like I, I look at it and it's like if I put a thousand dollars a game, okay. If I put if I put two hundred fifty dollars on the game, I am still going to get that same rush from the two fifty as the a thousand. I think that yeah. why not just why not just do that? Because then what happens is once you win, you're like I didn't it, 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 it you didn't feel it the way you want to feel it. That's the problem in the moment. You're you but then you look at you look at your ledger and you're like ah. Oh, you know, I I should probably up this to get a little bit more of some juice going here. Um, but yeah, I, I feel the same way. If I have any invested interest in a game at all, it could be $50, it could be $500. It, it, it's still the same. You're going to still get the same, like, rooting passion out of me regardless. Like, I, I will root for a game that I have $25 on, $50. The same way I would root for 500 It's just It's just mentally, I'm just insane like that. It's you know just, why, Mikey? Because you like why? to be a winner. I do like to be a winner. Yeah, you I do. do. Yeah, you Being do. a winner feels good. Being yeah, a winner yeah. feels real good. And Bob, maybe it's a classic case of the Bobby Mogul syndrome where you just got too much cash rolling around. Oh, okay. you know? <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing? Mikey? Are I we mean, doing? Michael, I mean, I, I'm not trying. I, it's a good thing, Bob. You should celebrate that. Look at that apartment. Look at those skylights. What do you got on your oh. wrist, Joe? I got oh, nothing no. on my what wrist. Got, what do you got on your wrist? I got nothing. But yeah. I, I, I'm staying I, in my parents' house. You want to see the bed I'm sleeping in? Oh, no. Let's see, let's he won't show you that. He won't show you that left wrist. Big bed. Big old bed I'm living in because I can't afford I can't afford an Airbnb. It is. It is <laughs> Holiday crazy. Airbnbs, by the way, are through the roof. They're outrageously expensive. Oh, that's a ticket. Ticket's been getting banged <laughs> on Airbnbs ever since. This guy's, been, li this guy's been living in an Airbnb for like he, a month. He is, bro. This guy. I went to dinner with him the other night. I, I said, you know, am I going to see you for New Year's Eve? He goes, no, I'm going to Charleston. I said, all right, when are you coming back? He goes, no, that's my move. I'm, I'm done with L.A. He, he's going to Charleston from Jupiter. Never let anybody know. Wait, wait, wait. What? what? Yeah. And then now we got to fly him back for a Bob to sports trip that's in L.A. So he went to Charleston, and then he's going to go Charleston to Jupiter. Nobody had any idea. I didn't know that that was – I thought he was just going for the holidays. He, he came to the steakhouse. He said, you know, I really want to go out with the bang my last night. Did you see the order that this guy put in? <laughs> that, was like, that, was like, that was like a death row meal. Literally, that that like a is that crazy? I think I mean, Ticket's been having a good go out with a bang. He went out with a bang because that's literally like, what is your last meal? That's what you order. Yeah. Whatever you ordered was what you order. Kansas City, <laughs> bone in. But and and look, he got appetizers that I'll read off, but he never checked with anybody else to see if they want these appetizers. <laughs> um, this is the big ticket order the other night. He said he wanted to go out to the bank. He had a wedge salad, shrimp cocktail garlic bread, crab cake, scallops that were an entree that he decided to, to audible into an appetizer. He got the dry-aged bone-in 24-ounce Kansas City steak that he finished, hash brown shoestring fries, <laughs> lobster mac and cheese, cream spinach, before asking anybody if they- Did if he they, do two desserts, too? He got cheesecake and key lime pie. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was the craziest- our bill was over eight hundred dollars. Oh my! But Bob, you know, ticket every time he sets foot in the grill in the alley, he like loses it a little bit. Yeah, we had a birthday dinner for me. This is a true story, Mikey. That birthday dinner this year for me, there had to be what eight people at oh, least. Yeah, ticket. Unbeknownst to anybody, we come, we finish a meal. By the way, we ordered like crazy, everything, drinks, food, sides. Come to ask for the bill. Ticket had paid for the whole meal for like 10 people. Mikey, so when he steps in there, he just, he, 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 he loves himself some grill on the alley, man. He goes off. So this is not new territory, Bob. This is. By the way, everything, everything he ordered 
is a spectacular, is a spectacular yeah. water. I mean, it's a, <laughs> you're talking wedge salad is like a staple for steakhouse. The, you know, the cream spinach is a staple. Shrimp cocktails is a staple. Lobster mash. I mean, that's all that's all excellent ordering. It's just like I'm concerned <laughs> why he felt necessary to do that. Although I will say this, Bob, you had talked about asking other people if they wanted those appetizers. There's nothing more frustrating than going to dinner with a big group of people and having to decide what appetizer everyone yeah. would like to because no one ever just it's very rare you get everyone just agrees on everything. If you right. find a group of friends that you automatically agree to appetizers, I would say those are some of your closest friends. There's like a handful of people I could name where I know if we go out to dinner, couples dinner, friends dinner, whatever, and we just, I'll just start rattling off apps and everyone's like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Or they, or, uh, if you find those people, stick with those people because it's the other people that the indecisiveness that makes the, that a very arduous process going through the appetizer order. And I hate that. I that's really do. Why- you got my secret weapon is Joey Day. If yeah. you have Joey yeah. Day on the table, you let him run. Well, you need yeah. to have somebody who can initiate just to go out there and just and what just take I? take a t- step on a ledge. And then listen, if you have to deal with the crossfire afterwards, that's fine. Normally, what I'll do is I'll or it depends how big the table is. If you got eight, ten people, you order like two to three different apps and you do two different ones. So like two versions of each. So you have one on each side of the table. Nobody can complain that they didn't get something. Cause that's another thing. Sometimes people order like a shrimp cocktail. There's 10 people and there's only like eight shrimp. So that's two people are getting, two people are getting banged right out of the gate. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You're not finding a shrimp cocktail with eight shrimp in it. Now you're not well, going to, you're six. not going to find it's normally six. You're going to find five to six is what, what you're going to co- get. What about a cocktail shrimp? Cocktail shrimp's a little Cocktail different. Cocktail shrimp, on the other hand, hand now. <laughs> by the way, but the, the biggest psychopath move of that whole order, by far, by a wide margin, not even close with Two the desserts. Board, is the double dessert order. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is something a serial killer would do. I got to I gotta step in for him there, just in regard to the dessert order. Somebody wanted one of those desserts. No, he ordered one of the desserts, and then they sent out a comp dessert because the server spilled water on jet steak <laughs> when jet steak came out. So I will defend take it for the the last dessert. Okay. Okay. Order okay. That How makes a Jet lot react to that, that situation. That he makes a lot. Of sense. You know, Joe said something about Jet that I think is so true, and you can take it for what it is. And I I go out to dinner with Jet all the time, reluctantly from his end. Um, Jet is totally okay with Mikey. You got you can go to a steakhouse with Jet. He's okay with sitting at the table and not saying a single word the entire <laughs> dinner. And you yeah. have to steer the entire conversation because he's okay with that. If you go in the car with him, he can drive. I, I watched him while we had to go to a Walmart on a Bob to sports trip 30 minutes away. It was me, Perez, and Jet. It was in the RV, so I was all the way in the back. I watched him and Jet <laughs> drive the whole way to Walmart and not say a single word to each other. That's awkward I silence. Mean, I can't deal I with can't that. I can't do it. Is it awkward though? You guys like you guys spend so much time together, and even to a degree like us, we spend so much time together, whether it's planning something, doing the podcast, talking about the podcast, going on the podcast, being on the trips together. Like, isn't there reach a point where it's like you're you're you see each other so much that it's like if you can't have those moments where you just don't have to say a fucking word, isn't it doesn't that get a little I, I see? I don't I don't find, think we'd have that with you, Michael. I don't think there'd be silence with you. I I I just don't think it's just not. It's not something that I'm comfortable with. I don't I don't mind moments of silence totally. I don't mind right. half an hour though. This guy will go on. <laughs> if you don't have anything for him, he's not bringing it to you. You got to bring it to him. You know? Yeah. Like he was yeah. at the table, he wasn't even looking at us. Like he would just be like looking out into the distance. He he won't say a word. Somebody Otto asked him the other day. on in that brain, man. Somebody Otto. asked him the other day what he wanted for Christmas. He said a, a, a swift ending to his life. See, now that is it. That is Nikki Diamond's response. That's something that, that's that's something that Nikki would say a hundred percent. That's something a swift ending to my life would be nice. <laughs> something he would say. But if you don't know him, you like people who don't, he'll say it in front of people who don't know him. They don't know how to respond to that. You it's know, like, Jet, Jet, you know, uh, Nikki Diamonds thinks he's going to die soon. Jet wants to die soon. <laughs> That's the way that I would put Like Diamonds would be like, yeah, Bob, I don't know how much more of a longing I have in this yeah, life. Yeah, so I hope yeah. you appreciate me while you he have put that on. He put that on Instagram today. He put something out like a reminder of how to handicap games a certain way. And he's like, I hope everyone remembers this when I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Like, bro, you, like you're not, he's not, he's not 50. He's not 40. You know, he's, 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 you know, but this, it is what it is. Can we, can we check in with Nicky Diamonds? Can we call him? Sure. I'll ask him how much longer he thinks he's got left. Okay. <laughs> you call him or you want me to call him? Yeah, you call. I like, I like when you steer that with him. <laughs> he, he, you get him going. Ask him how much longer know. he's got left. See I see if he'll answer. We'll see. He'll answer. He could be busy. There could be a, you know, there could be a Wolves of Wisdom uh, live. <laughs> oh, he wished me Merry Christmas and I didn't see it. Oh, that's terrible, Bob. Unbelievable, dude. That's not good at all. Bob, you better wish him a happy, uh, happy Merry Christmas belated or whatever. I just texted him Merry Christmas. Hey. Hey, Michael, how you doing? Good. Good. Listen, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I hate to do that, but you're you're live on the Brilliantly Dumb Show right now. Bob wants to apologize first and foremost for not returning your Merry Christmas text. Do you have anything to say to him? Well, <laughs> I mean, look, these guys again, I mean, uh, I'm going to start to need some type of salary from this goddamn program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, there should be some level of compensation at this point. As far as the Merry Christmas, I mean... I know that Bob never really liked me. Oh, <laughs> come on. That's so ridiculous. From the moment that I walk, he walked into my shop with that, you know, California Jewish glow. <laughs> I knew that this guy was just some lifeless piece of shit. Oh. I, I, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. <laughs> to this day, even without a returned Merry Christmas. I would still hold him to my breast and feed him lunch. Yep. Yep. Oh, That's just the type of guy you are, though. Oh, God. Now let's is talk. Is that Joseph? Is that yeah. Joseph? Yeah. Live? You got Joseph? Live from Miami Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nicholas. How the hell are you, you silly son of a bitch? Diamonds. Oh, we love you. Diamonds. I don't. Sorry to cut you off, Joe. I, I, I don't think people have heard your official statement in regards to Joey D slinging out your own handicap bets as his own. No, that's not true, would Bob. You, that's would not you, true. Would you like to make an official that statement is not in true. regards to that matter? I have sung the praises of Nicholas. He's picking up $30 subscriptions throughout the whole Midwest. What did he say? He said he heard he was not only that, on top of it, he was charging $30 subscription throughout that's the whole That's outrageous. I, I have... I have <laughs> I have sung his praises like a canary. I I, I really have. Canary. More like a stool yeah. pigeon. <laughs> well, how the hell are you, boys? Talk to me. Tell me, what's, what are you talking about on the program today? Tell Bob has a serious Bob. question to ask you about uh, life and death. With Diamonds, <laughs> when you... I want to talk death for a second, because I hate, I hate when you do it, and it scares the shit out of me, because I think this right. world is a very sad world without you. And we've noticed that you talk about death a lot. So our question would be, is that something that you truly do believe is is in your near future? Or is that something that, um, you know, you, you do for fun? Okay. I'm going to answer this question seriously. <laughs> I am a man who goes with trends in all ways of life. That's right. The men in my family have not lived long lives. Now, breaking news. <laughs> breaking news live from the brilliant on the brilliantly dumb show. Nikki Diamonds has a slight, slight heart condition. Oh no. Man. No, don't say it, Nick. Why are you laughing, Joe? I'm not laughing. <laughs> you want all the picks, Joe? <laughs> what do you say? You want all the picks? <laughs> no, Nick. I want you to live a long, prosperous life. Is what I what I want. Well, that's not going to happen. So, Jesus. Well, we have to move on to to the next. <laughs> I have to take some a pill, and I have to take some care of myself. And if I do, in the long run, I might, I wouldn't need like a transplant, which, and if that's the case, then I'm going to be around for at least another 10 years. That's good. Well, we would hope that'd be the minimum, Nick. 
You know, everybody, you know what? America runs on pills, though. It really does. You know, everybody and their mother's taking pills. Everybody, high blood pressure, cholesterol, heart, you know, all that. So, you know, the pills, I mean, they've done wonders with modern science, Nick. <laughs> of course. Now, let's get to the second half of Bob's question. If it was up to me, I'd die tomorrow. Yeah. Jeez, Nick. <laughs> Jeez. You really, really need me. So, yes. it, so he said, so Bob was saying that like the difference between you and the jet is that you say you're going to die soon. The jet wants to die soon. And I was going to cut Bob off and say, well, Nick also says that as well. Uh, but I, I would rather use it. It has to come from the mouth of babes. Now, by the way, all that being said, all eyes potentially on UFC Atlantic City. In yeah, March. don't. Yeah. Whoa. You got to get to March, Nikki. Well. If 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 I can get to March, I to, promise. Uh, I mean, so what's being told to me here? And wow, do I take this with a grain of salt? Are you telling me that the boys are going to be uh, taking a trip to the city of Atlantic, which happens to be my main stopping ground? Your town. Yep, your town. Is that what you're telling me, Mike? That's wow. what that's what we're interested in doing, yes. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to start shining my shoes. Yep. <laughs> yep. He said I'm gonna have to start shining my <laughs> shoes. <laughs> um oh, what that's time insane. we'll have. All I could say is what a time that we will have. Some would and say una bella giornada. Uh I could show I could show you quite a time there. <laughs> yeah, <we're going> to... <laughs> Last I thing, would. Diamonds, I got one more thing for you. If you did know that you were going to have your final day, what would that day consist of? What would that day look like? I don't know if that. I don't know if we can answer. That on <laughs> what, what's wrong? With I, don't, I, I I don't know if that could be answered on the show, Bob. Really? I mean, you would know, Mikey, but but what? I don't see anything wrong with that. One thing that I would want, and this this is <laughs> this is the truth. I would want to know that I would at least in that final day for at least two hours be able to be with all of my friends. Oh, that's in nice. the back room of Frankie and Johnny's. Wow. Oh, that's special. Great Without world. Mikey falling asleep. No, I'd stay awake. I'd stay, I'd stay awake for that one. I'd stay awake for that one. On the way in. Yeah, I'd take my nap on the way. <laughs> but with uh, with two packs of cools, uh, and and just all of us, the Mad Cuban, UFP, UFP, yep, yep, and and my my closest. My closest surrounding crew. That's that's what I would want. Wow, that's special. Uh, the next day, I would want the same guys tossing the dirt on me. Yeah. Wow, Man, dude, that wow. Would be... wow, wow, that's wow. heartfelt. That is. Yeah. We love you, man. And, we love uh, you, Nicholas. Joe Joe would then become uh, the Tri State area's number one handicap. <laughs> 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 we love you dick we love we love you nicholas hey bobby i love you too and bob don't forget uh in the next month or two i'm going to have to tell you the famous all-time don bosco arrest story Oh, yeah, he got, he got arrested before his high school baseball game while he was stretching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Layup lines of the Don Bosco game in 04, but let's save that one for the Is that year. the What about the Essex County tournament basketball yeah. game? I was I – was, um, I was uh, – giving a double technical thrown yeah. out of that game. <laughs> okay. All right, we love you, buddy. Enjoy your day. I'll listen to you guys. I love you very, very much. You're the best. Love you too, Diamonds. Do I mean? Do we do? Do we get a weekly diamond segment in? He's so good, man. Is that what? That that, might help prolong his life, Bob. It might. It might give him something to long for. That AC. That AC UFC thing could be one of the more special times ever. It, It just could be. 
I, I want see. him, by the way, if we go there the last time I saw him go there, he wore an all white suit. Yeah. I, I would request he looked magnific- magnificent. I mean, I, I'm I pretty sure he that. would be. I'm pretty sure you would not have to be worried about what he would have dialed up to wear to that fight. You would not have to. He would wear oh something completely God. preposterous. To that diamonds fight. on a fight night. Yeah, oh, yeah. that would. Oh, be it would be diamond. like. It would be honestly. It would be like. Uh, what's his name? The, Mayweather. The, no, the former manager for uh, for for Tyson back in the day. Oh, Don, Don King. King. It would Don be like King. Don King <laughs> <laughs> with the hair and everything. It would be like Don King. Yeah. Oh, you oh that's seen unreal. Her. When he came on Mikey's only subs uh Christmas party, the, yeah. the attire, I have a picture of it that I could send a bone and take it to pop up. The yeah. fur that this guy was wearing, it you just wow, you know, with the, the full thing, with a full brimmed fedora and yeah. the big huge glasses. You, <laughs> the whole time he was busting Mikey's balls about how long it was gonna go and <laughs> he was gonna end the show. Like 10 minutes in, he was busting his balls. The thing with diamonds is you would think when you hear them, when you see them, you would think that it's a bit. And Mikey told us very early on, it's not a bit. Like, it's him. And he's living in a – he was born in the wrong era. He was. Yeah. You know? We can all agree to that. And he hasn't been able to adjust to, to the new era. He's still and living – thank God for that, honestly. Thank God, absolutely. Uh, I will also say some of the best music that you will ever hear, like on an Instagram story, will come from that man – because he knows he knows songs that I I I I've never even yeah. heard of. Then you hear it and you're like, oh my god, this is a classic. He Special. gives me he feeds me doo wop songs. Then I'm a big <laughs> I'm a I'm a huge doo wop guy. I could provide a library of doo wop songs, and every once in a while he uncovers like another gem that I've never heard before, and I'm just like, it's unbelievable that he could still do this because I thought I've heard a that's a good life lesson. It's a good life lesson. All of you people out there who think you're know it alls and you think it. There's always somebody out there who knows something different or a little bit more. That's very important. Very important. 100%, Michael. Um, <clears throat> all right, boys. I, I think it's time to get our into our uh, buy or sell. Sure. Week. What did you see that you liked? What did you see that you did not like? Um, Mike V's going to go ahead and start us up. I'm going to do a buy this week, and I want to get it out of the way early. Um, and I think you guys may know where I'm heading with this. I watched this T Pain over the covers, um, above the covers or over the whatever it is special on YouTube. I I always thought this guy had a good voice, even when he was doing the auto tune mm. stuff. I always thought he had a good voice. Forget about how good his voice is. He covered Frank Sinatra, Led Zeppelin. He was doing country music. Chris Stapleton, know, Tennessee whiskey was sensational. Did you hear his <clears throat> Led Zeppelin cover of of War Pigs? I mean. The range that this guy has, this guy is a, I don't want to say a generational talent, but I'm going to say he's a generational talent. Wow. There's not too many entertainers, pure entertainers mm. left. Mm. This guy is a pure entertainer. And it, it kind of like brought me back to like a little bit of that, like Dean Martin, Sinatra, Rat Pack kind of a thing when he was doing this, because you don't see a lot of guys just go up there and just they could do anything. And it feels like this guy could just go up there and just do anything and entertain anybody. And I'm tipping the cap. I'm buying T-Pain very bigly. Wow. Very bigly. 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 Quite bigly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mikey has been sending these videos to us, so you know how much that he loves it. I think it's unbelievable. And he takes a lot of shit. You mentioned the auto-tune. Yeah. He- when I hear T Pain's name, I I instantly think of the shit that he takes for auto tune. I don't understand what the voice that he has and watch it. Why would he even do the whole auto tune thing? Because he did it so well, Bob. I think I think Joe's right, and I think it was just such a unique thing that nobody had heard at the time. I think it was so new, and and you that was like the first. I was like, what? When you first heard like uh like buy you a bartender, drink, and I, bartender. Bio yeah, like you know, I, I mean, like, like I remember thinking, like I have never heard quite anything, anything quite like this. It was so unique at the time, and I guess he just took the ball and ran with it. But my God, this guy, this guy has reinvented himself completely. He's going to have a whole not his career should skyrocket again into this whole different strata because if he did live performances like that in little intimate gatherings like that at smaller venues, I would a hundred percent buy a ticket. One hundred percent buy a ticket. He's awesome. He's always He's been great night out. Yeah, He's been a I, great entertainer I for, like for when years. Rappers do like the covers to like even like the classic rock stuff. You know who does it all the time and he crushes it is um Post Malone. Yeah. Post, yeah, Post Malone, Malone. He does like the old school like classic rock stuff and he crushes it. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I I like it a lot, Mikey Joseph. If you're okay with it, I'll I'll go ahead and rip. Go um, ahead. It's a quick one. I think kind of an obvious mm-hmm. one. I have nothing against the guy. I think uh, you know he he should capitalize on the moment the way that he did. Sell your stock in Tommy DeVito. Uh, Bye. It, yeah. It, oh it, man. That whole thing is, and I mean, you could see even while it was going on that this was going to come to an end. It had very much like the Jeremy Lin type thing to it. And Jeremy Lin's, I think, lasted a little bit even longer. And I don't think Jeremy Lin's down was like as obvious that it was going to end as great as it was. Um, I don't blame the guy. He's taking a lot of shit for oh now. He's, you know, doing all the sign to deal with Rayos and all this stuff. You can't blame the guy for doing no, it. No, you no. have a small window. You got to capitalize. No. The only thing they I think when the sun is shining, Bob. Yeah, the the only thing I could have done without is his agent. You know, kept saying uh-huh. that he's not trying to be in the spotlight or anything like that. He was trying to be in the spotlight. I mean, it, it's hard to look at the guy and not think that he was trying to capitalize on that. Again, I don't blame them for doing that, but I think if you're just smart about it, you got to sell your stock. Well, Tyrod's a better quarterback. There's no question about it. Listen, guys, guys, there's some guys who come into this league, okay, and their backups, just because they're backups, the, the starter has been, you know, an entrenched NFL starting quarterback. And the pedigree of the backup is, you know, they may be somebody from a big-time school that was a prolific college quarterback. You got to remember, this guy was not a prolific quarterback at Illinois. It wasn't like he came from Illinois and he set records and he was doing all this and broke this record, broke that record. He's just, he's just, you know, he was a fringe practice squad guy who got a chance. He did a couple things. Bob hit the nail on the head. Window was very, very, very small. And I think his dad and his agent pretty much played into capitalizing on all of that. And they did. And you see him in all these Italian themed social media things. And I really, I really, really got to be honest, coming from the area that he's from a couple towns away it was getting to the point where even me and my friends were like, my God, can this just stop? It is painful. It's painful. What well, about his agent was inducted into the Italian, like, uh, honor yeah, hall of fame? Like, come on, something. we don't have more Italians than this agent, one agent? I, I got from a direct source that's worked with that agent. Okay? Agent's not a great guy. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, not, wow, not that agent. is some no. big time stuff out not, of Nutley this afternoon. Not a good guy, man. Not a good guy. Really? Tried to, tried to pull a little bit of a fast one. Now, you heard about, probably people are thinking I'm talking about that thing where he was supposed to go to a Marstown pizzeria for oh, 10 years. And th- th- this is a whole different case. And it's the agent who seems to be behind all of that. So not the greatest guy. But listen, maybe, you know, he's a cutthroat type guy who just, he doesn't care who he pisses off or who he turns off to get his guy where he wants to get him. And that's his business, but I've heard not not the greatest of people. I just it just bothered me that you know you want Tommy to have his moment, and I don't think Tommy did anything wrong. I would have done the same exact thing, but yeah, the the agent to say oh he doesn't want to be in the limelight, the spotlight. I just think that's such bullshit. And then he's going on every single podcast known to man. If you don't want to be on the spotlight, you wouldn't be going on every single goddamn podcast. Um. Interesting news coming out of Nutley, New Jersey today. Wow. Wow. My I, I don't want I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to sell my I'm not gonna sell my source down the river, but let me just say this. The agent did something for a business owner, but it was worth what he did for the business owner was worth maybe a couple hundred of hundreds of dollars. And in return, he hit him with the can you do this for me? And the favor in return would have cost tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. And he got like pissy when, when the owner was like, well, listen, man, like this is not an even exchange whatsoever. Yeah. You're talking tens of thousands versus hundred. So yeah, not the greatest of guys. Not wow. Of guys. Mikey dropping the Great. hammer. With, thanks to his source live on the brilliantly dumb show. Great little tidbit right there, man. Uh, and yeah. we can't know what the favor is, right? I'm, um, well, you will. I will divulge the favor to you, but I can, I can, if I divulge the favor, people are going to know what industry this guy's in, and then they could kind of do a little detective work, and it could be found. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Fair enough. I, I bet you who knows him. I wouldn't be surprised if Nikki Diamonds knows him. I don't think he. Well, I don't think he does, but you never know. <laughs> he probably Nikki would probably call him a never was. You know, knowing Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's head on over to Joey D. 
a small buy this week. Nothing, nothing crazy. I, I just thought having three games on Christmas Day yesterday for the NFL was really awesome. And not only that, Great. I thought the games when you just looked at them from afar, Eagles, Giants, Raiders, Chiefs, both playing on the road, I thought they were going to be awful games. We were actually treated to some good football. And then what was supposed to be the game of the day actually ended up being the biggest flop. But just, I, I thought it broke down the day very good. You had the 10 o'clock game, the one o'clock game, the five o'clock game. It still seemed like there was enough games on Sunday that you didn't really suffer, that there was still plenty of football to go around because nobody had buys and you still had football on the Saturday. So I thought they did a really good job of breaking that down through the week. Uh, I, I, I would like to see something like that more often, to be honest, you know, take away the Thursday night, Give me a multiple game slot on Monday. Um, and I think it makes it really enjoyable, but I, it was great. I thought that it just, it made Christmas that much more enjoyable. You know, we were opening presents and stuff. You had the football game in the background. Now, obviously these young men, and and I credit them for, you know, their, their jobs. They had to be away, some of them from their families on Christmas. That's not something that you want to ask, but I just thought it made the day that much better. And Christmas is already pretty hard to beat to begin with. You give me a, a slate full of football games and good ones at that. I thought it was awesome. I thought it made the day that much better. And I'm buying Christmas slate games. Now, I don't know if that's something that, you know, is going to happen continuing moving forward, but definitely something probably. Goodell got right and he doesn't get much right. So I'll give credit where uh, credit is. No probably enough. won't probably won't continue. Cause I don't know how they could do that. If it's like a Tuesday, Wednesday type of deal with the timing of the schedule, but I agree totally with the buy I'll tell you what else it did. Like all you hear about Christmas time is like, Christmas NBA, NBA yeah. on Christmas. NBA, was, NBA no, one, no one even gave a shit. Well, Bob, Bob kind of. <laughs> besides Bob, nobody Dude. gave a shit about the NBA. <laughs> NBA had to have suffered yesterday. There's no guess, doubt about diamonds, it. They had to get crushed. They had diamonds, to get crushed. I'm saw the NBA bets and, and he texts me, he goes, what in God's name? It was one of the tougher scenes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is true, Mikey. I mean, like M Christmas used to belong to the NBA. NFL <laughs> to stuff that. Um, NBA, I usually like the NBA. I usually watch a good amount of it. I have no clue what's going on with the NBA. <laughs> How the Lakers, who I found out yesterday, are one game over 500 and they won this in season tournament that I know nothing about. Um, NBA's in a bad way, it feels like. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I like, think it's more you. I think they're doing I, right I think they're still the second highest rated of the of the big they make five. a ton of money. But um <laughs> the thing is is that I think that they're still so far off the NFL and their margin over like MLB NHL, I don't think is like that insane anymore but i mean they still get their ratings i don't know why i mean i just think it's so bad i just think it's so bad and like bob said i don't even know what's going on in the nba i have no fucking idea i still like the nba but if you put a gun Cutsy to does. my head and Cutsy, Cutsy does like it Cutsy likes. but if NBA. you ask me like uh my brother actually asked me he's like where does the nba rank in terms of like games and sports that you watch it, it, it i would say nfl would come first um i would actually say maybe college basketball would come second um, or college football, I, it'd be a close because March Madness to me is the most fun. But I'd actually go NFL, college football, college basketball. Yeah. I'm not a huge baseball guy. I know that you guys are. But then I would say NBA and then baseball for me. Yeah, but I would I, say I, for me, the, the sports for me, it would be pro football, college football is almost dead even. I actually think college football is a better product to watch. It is. It's a better product to watch because the, the officiating in the NFL and again yesterday – that Ravens play, uh, Lamar got tripped by the official, and that counted as a safety. Like, it's just the officiating in the NFL is so bad. But I would say, Joe, this, the margins are so slim between college basketball, college football, NFL, MLB. I'd actually, put any, I'd actually put NHL above both of those. The problem with the NHL, NHL – Playoff NHL is unbelievable. The Plenty, problem is there's not hockey. enough exposure on, on hockey in the yeah. States. I can, I've been up here in Canada, and it's just all hockey. And so, yeah. like, when I come here, I just watch a ton of hockey – but I, but you're right. It's it's NBA's it's 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 slide, man. It's fun if 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 two of the stars go against each other, like LeBron and Katie, something like that. I guess kind of fun. I don't know what it is. I just in in defense NBA, I really haven't given it a shot. But just the in season tournament, I have no clue. Well, I think they did that, Bob, to help, like, with the fact that all these guys were doing load management, missing games, isn't that? So they're trying to make them take 
the the regular season games more seriously because to your to your you know credit what you said is like when the star doesn't play like the the overall product suffers immensely and people are paying money to go watch these guys who are getting paid ungodly amounts of money play and they're sitting out games so the in-season tournament was a way that they're trying to make these games more relevant for these guys that I they're going to the take it seriously got, i think i think the players whose teams won or like got after the final they won half a million each yeah. Yeah. they got they won eat they each won half a million so some people be like well what does lebron need to do with half a million but there was some guys on the bench where their entire oh. salary was like a million dollars. So it was very important to them. And then I think a lot of these guys, they have pride. So like the trophy and stuff like they actually, it means more to them than it probably should, but it's, I think it's their way of trying to like focus more on improving the product mid season. When a lot of these guys just don't give a shit. Mikey, if you were me, would you go to the Rose bowl? Mikey yeah. would. Yeah. Well, it's well, a great it's game, Bob. It's Alabama, Michigan. Yeah, I mean it's a playoff game. It's 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 the parade of. I mean that's that's the most that is the most pageantry filled bowl game there is. A lot of pageantry. Remember, you're gonna miss that. You're gonna miss that Washington game after. Yeah, I know, but Bama, Bama, Michigan's the that's the game to watch. That's a bigger game to watch. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I would go, Bob. I would. I think it would be. I think it would be an experience. I I mean, but I mean, Bob, Bob, Bob Bob ain't going. He he made his mind. He could be on the field. He wouldn't go. You know what? I um I I will say it's a little disrespectful how fast I said no. But like right when he said, I was just like, no. Who is this to Jason? Scott. So you can imagine. Oh, that's even know. worse, dude. Yeah. He, was, yeah. he was probably so excited. Big Alabama guy was probably stoked well, was to like ask. When, when By Jeff the way, that's said, a huge thing that he asked you to go. Well, come on now, Joe. I mean, no, it's not. Don't don't make me hurt a little. <laughs> I'm just saying he probably oh, got was a little I mean, bad. people aren't people are people aren't passing out tickets to the Rose Bowl like it's Jets Commanders on Christmas. <laughs> so I mean, well, Bob I said no. How long was the pause? I would. St- it it was a quick. It was a hard no. It, there was no. There was no question about you know. Can I try and convince? Oh, him? poor but Scott. It was, it was shut. Now, I have to pay my own way, which is fine. But just keep that in mind too. It's not you know. Still got to pay my own way. <laughs> That's all I got for now. Um, all right, we're moving right along. <laughs> we're moving right along here, fellas. Uh, today, top five. I fired in this top five. Um, I think it's a pretty good one. Um, a lot of personalities at ESPN throughout the day, throughout the years. We're going to be doing top five ESPN personalities. Um, Mikey, why don't we start with you? Um. All right, five. I have my guy who I've I've sung his praises before on the show. I think he's one of the best to ever do it. Um, Chris Fowler. Chris Fowler to me, um, one of the best to ever do it. Period for ESPN. Uh, I miss. I I I don't like the guy who hosts Game Day. I loved when Fowler was the host of ga- Game Day. He does the commentary with Herb Street. Who, by the way, Herb Street was a fringe top five guy for me also. But I'm going to take Fowler out of respect. Number four, my guy, Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper, Mel Kuyper to me is, is everything that's good about the NFL. The draft breakdown is like, that is like one of my favorite parts of the year, just to listen to Mel Kuyper. I could listen to him for hours. Number three, give me Dickie V. Dick Vitale, ESPN. Oh, yeah. Well, Dickie V has to be in the top five. Uh, again, probably, I don't want to say the best to ever do it because that's a term we throw out too loosely, but one of the best to ever do it, Dickie V. Number two. Chris Berman. Uh, Chris Berman, before there was NFL Red Zone as a kid, and yeah. many people probably remember, NFL Primetime. Primetime him and, was unbelievable. Him, and him Tom Jackson. Jackson. Was it Tom, Tom Jackson? Jackson? Tommy Jackson. Tommy Tom Jackson, Jackson. The former Denver Bronco. Chris Berman's, oh, his, the best part about the Chris game. Berman, the references he would make and the, the, the nicknames he would give players, like you have to, the older I get, the more I appreciate listening to that stuff because he was so ahead of his time with doing that. Just incredible how he would come off the cuff with this stuff. Um, and number one, out of respect, uh, eloquent, great delivery, one of the best, no longer with us, unfortunately. Give me Stuart Scott at number one. I got Stuart Scott at number one as the goat for me. Um, he was he was as cool as the other side of the pillow, as he was. That's say. the guy with the glasses with the bad eyes. Yes, yes, that passed away. Yes, Stuart Scott, uh, number one for me. Yeah, um, that that's Stuart Scott, Joey D. That that is Stuart Scott. I I'm not good. I'm not really good with names. That's the guy who he, he died a couple of years ago. No, answer. Yeah. I think more than I I think he died. It was a while ago now. Yeah, 
Yep. Um, I, great list. I got no issue with that list at all. I didn't have Dickie V in there. I'm already going to throw out that that's my honorable. Oh, number Bobby five. Bull. This one's a sleeper for me. I think he is hysterical, and I don't even think he's with ESPN anymore. I just find him to be the funniest, most blunt commentator. Uh, Jeff Van Gundy, to me, was one <laughs> of my absolute favorites with NBA. He just he he had no filter. He couldn't help himself. I thought he was a riot. Um, I have him at five. Number four, this one wasn't in your list, Mike. I got Kenny Maine. Who Kenny I, Maine. I don't even time. know who that is. Who is that, Bob? All time. He's one of the anchors on ESPN, and he does like a lot of – I don't know why they got away from those ESPN commercials. Or maybe yeah, they didn't. Maybe they sued Dylan. The office, like the office ones you're talking about? Yeah, those used to be the fucking best. They were the best. He well, the Sports Center, did. it was like – that was the Sports Center commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Kenny Maine was always in them. And I thought the ones that he was in was the funniest ones. Um, three, I got Chris Berman. Chris Berman is the man, still yeah. doing it. Uh, two, I have Stuart Scott up in there. And then uh, my number one is uh, Scott Van Pelt. Scotty Van Pelt's great. Scotty Van Scotty Pelt is just the yeah. man. Been doing it for quite some time. Everybody loves him. He's a very likable guy. Seems like a class act. Speaking of class acts, Joey D, what do you got? Um, at number five, I have Tony Kornheiser. I think Tony Kornheiser is a funny guy. Like, he's a guy, he kind of reminds me of your dad, Bob. Like, he's a guy you just want to listen to. You want to see his takes on things because they're funny. Yeah, and that he's old and Jewish is what Joe is meaning to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... In, in Joe's defense, I have I have heard people say that with him, with Kornheiser. He's Heiser. funny. Like, he, he, Larry he, David, bro. Yeah, I, 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 but he, I he comes up with a, with an argument and you can't sway him off of it. Like he's set on what he, what he believes in and he'll let the whole world know. I think he's very in, entertaining to watch. Um, and number four, I have John Gruden. I, I, I know that John Gruden has faced some scrutiny. I'm not condoning that, but no one here can sit here and say that he wasn't hysterical and entertaining to listen to when he was doing the commentating that, dude he was unbelievable when him Tarico, and jaws were in the booth for monday night Bro, football, he was unbelievable that to me was peak monday night football have you ever seen have you ever seen the video of gruden when when chris sims is trying to get a call into the huddle and Gru and he can't get the call <laughs> right and gruden just goes insane on him Yep. Spider X Y two banana twist on four. <laughs> yeah. dude. dude, he was so good. And I know he's faced some scrutiny for what he's done, but I still have to acknowledge how great and entertaining he was when no, he was on. I mean, he was awesome. Um, and number three, I have Dickie V. I, I think with Mikey, we reference him all the time. The guy is so like on the edge of your seat when he's announcing games. He's unbelievable. He's one of the best to ever do it. I think he needs to be in every top five. Um, number two, I have a guy, and obviously this is dear to my heart because I'm a hockey guy, and I didn't expect him to be on your list. I got my Barry Melrose. Mention. That's yeah. my honorable mention. Barry, Barry Melrose, Melrose is yes. unbelievable, yes. man. Yes. He doesn't give a shit. He does his thing. He's got his mullet still. He's... Great hair. I was going to oh, say, my he God. makes my honorable mention just for the hair. But he, he he's the one guy who actually keeps hockey relevant within that whole thing. Right. And it, and he's so entertaining. And then at number one, I, I, I have to put him as Chris Berman. I remember Mikey, and now maybe a different generation than Bob a little bit. NFL primetime was almost as good watching as the rest of the NFL prime slate because you simply didn't get the other games. So that right. was my one opportunity to really right. see – what happened around the that league was, and to know what zone, was going that on. That was red zone before red zone. It was just on a massive delay, but that but, was red zone before red zone. But the it was unbelievable was too, because it was like right around the dinner time. So you had that going, you got like, you know what the scores were, but you wanted to see the catch that Randy Moss made or, and then he throws in the whoop or the, yeah. he could go all the way. I mean, he was just unbelievable. He did it better than anybody else. And to me, like he was just, it was much watch. TV every single week. He's the best. Really I think is. we are. I think we're in for an interesting top five to see what people think about that one. Um, I said Dickie V. Honorable mention. Mikey V. You said Barry Melrose. Barry Melrose. I think Barry Melrose. Very underrated swag too. Barry Melrose. Is swaggy. He's of very. Swaggy. Joe My honorable me mention. I got Mike Wilbon. I think Mike Wilbon's really, really entertaining Wilbon's too. And I think he's very versatile um, and he's very knowledgeable. Some of these guys who go on, you don't know how much they actually know. I actually think Wilbon is very insightful and knowledgeable when it comes to what he's talking about. And he, he he's very good on his topics. Uh, that's my honorable mention as and well. He's a Bear, and he's a Bears fan. He's a Bears guy too, Michael. 
Big Bears guy. Fellas, um, big shout out to the ticket and bone getting this out Christmas uh, wow. the day after Christmas here. So Live from Charleston. <laughs> and happy, 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 happy birthday to Dorothy D. And wow, the go. Happy birthday, Ma. Happy Give birthday. Dorothy D. A happy birthday in the comments. And uh, folks, we love you. We appreciate you. That's been another edition of the Brilliantly Dumb Show. We will see you next week, boys.